31 of free code camps learn basic CSS by building a cafe menu. So for step 31, the article elements commonly contain multiple elements that have related information. In this case, it will contain a coffee flavor and a price for that flavor. So nest two P elements inside your article element. The first one's text should be French, van French vanilla and the second text, um, what was that? 3.00. Um, so let's just create our P tags here. So as we do, I'm just gonna copy that down. And for the first one, French vanilla, and the second P tag is 3.00, like so. We can see that being rendered to the page here. So let's check that, and that's passed. So step 32 is starting below the existing coffee slash price pair, add the following coffee prices um, coffee and prices using the article elements with two nested P tags uh, or elements um, inside each. As before, the P to element text should contain the coffee flavor and then, sorry for the first one, and the second one is the price. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is actually just duplicate this three more times. One, two, three. And I'm just gonna grab, let's say this one that will go here, and basically just, just copy and pasting. Um, maybe, you know, uh, for muscle memory and, and all that, you could actually type it out, um, but a bit too lazy for that now. Um, I wish there was a, a quick way to do this, but yeah, this is gonna be the quickest way, I think. Um, so let's do that, and just to get through this. But as you can see, we're just replicating um, all of the elements. And what have I done wrong? So pumpkin spice, hazelnut, that's four pounds. So actually I'll just change that to four. And actually it looks like we don't have enough elements. So and the last one, pin mocha. And what I will do actually is just as you can see here, we've kind of got some weird nesting going on. So I'm just gonna bring all of these back in line and like that, and that should pass now. Um, but ideally, we probably want to sort of think of a way um, down the line to actually wrap each of these in a different element so that is a bit clearer. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a, a long line of text here, and it's not very easy to read. Um, but hmm. ah, I see, so that's right. So we actually want five article elements, so each of them are their own article. Um, so that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is just grab let's say five of these it's gonna look terrible for now and actually I actually just realized there's no um, auto formatting so let me see if I can do this a little bit better but yeah we're gonna add in the articles like that and let's just see if I can just grab okay perhaps not so let's bring that over let's do one actually see if I can grab all of that and we want to just close off this article we've got a new one here for pumpkin spice we'll close off that one we'll create a new one and let me just bring all of this back over just so it's nested nicely and we can actually want to we can do the same here so we can probably grab both of these down here if i do that there we go so that's looking a lot better now. So each of them have their own article element wrapped around them. And I think that should be good now. So let's check that. There we go, it's all passed. Cool. So on to the next one, step 33, the flavors and prices are currently stacked on top of each other um, and centered within with their respective P elements. As you can see, it would be nice if the flavor was on the left and the price was on the right. So we're gonna add a class name of flavor so class equals flavor, oh, flavor, um, see American English, and that's all we need to do for this one, like so. So step 34, using the new flavor class as your selector, so we'll do dot flavor, like that. We wanna do text dash align. So that's the property and the value we're gonna to set to left. And as you can see, it jumps all the way to the left of the container that it's in, um, which is the menu here. So check that code, that's all good. 
So step 35, next you want to align the price to the right. So let's add a class of price to we'll see the, the price of the coffee bean or the coffee. And we'll check that. And then that's all good. And then I assume, yep, we want to then set the price. So dot price, which is targeting that class. We'll do text align uh, and that will be right. So that goes off to the right hand side of the page. There we go. That's all passed. So step 37. So this is kind of what you want, um, but now it would be nice if the flavor and price are on the same line. And as you can see here, there's still there's still this gap between them. Um, so whilst this is on the left, um, this one hasn't moved up to the right or, or vice versa. Um, and essentially it's because P elements are block level elements. So they t this actual, this text here is actually gonna take up the entire width um, of the parent element. So it goes all the way along to here. Then there's obviously some sort of default margin, top and bottom, or whichever way, I'm not sure. And then the same for the right. So it's actually spanning across the whole, um, sort of the whole of the page there. So to get them on the same line, we need to apply some styling to the P elements to let them, or basically force them to behave more like inline elements. So what we can do um, on the article here, um, would be to add a class and we'll give that a class of item like so. And we'll be targeting that in the CSS. So step 38, the P elements are nested in an article with the class attribute of item. So you can style all the P elements nested anywhere within elements, anywhere, yeah, in elements with a class name item like so. And then using the above selector, add a display property with the value of inline block. So we'll do dot item, and that is the, the article. And then we want to target the P or all the P's within inside that. And we'll give them a display and that will be inline dash block. And essentially, as you can see now, they're actually, they're on the same the line here and then they're next to each other. So as you can see, display right, um, or maybe we've actually lost that style now. Um, text line right, as you can see actually, isn't being applied. So it's been applied to the right of this article. Um, but yeah, because it's display inline block, it's now all on the same line, which is getting there. So step 39, that's closer, but yeah, as I mentioned, the price didn't stay over on the right. And this is because inline block elements only take up the width of their content, which is this, this basically. Um, so to spread them out, we want to add a width property to the flavor and price. And let's give that a width of 50% and for the price a width of 50%. And that's 50% I believe of the um, parent container. And what have I done here? 50%, 50%. <clears throat> um, so I don't know why that's dropped down. Um, I th I'd have thought it would actually keep, so 50% each, but let's just check that. It's passed, but I wonder why that would be. And let's see, so that didn't work. Starting the P elements as inline block and placing them on separate lines in the code creates an extra space to the right of the P first P element, causing the second one to shift to the next line. Okay, good to know. Um, interesting, so we just want to change the width of the second one to 49%. And there you go. Um, that's gone back up. And then if we did the same here, I assume it might look a little bit better, but we can leave that actually at 50, and then this one's 49. So if does it actually need to be 49 for both to pass the test, that's fine. We'll change that, and let's have a look. Check the code, there we go, we've all passed. Cool, so um, yeah, we're getting there in terms of some styling and display. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.